Hey, what's up? Jason here from U3D.College. Today, I got an email that I thought was pretty interesting, and I just wanted to share it and then share my response. Um, it's essentially asking about, you can read the whole thing here, but how much um, time or progress should you sacrifice on your project to make sure that it's clean and that your code is clean and everything is well architected? Now, I think it's kind of a trick question because having good, clean code and a nice, solid architecture should actually speed things up. It shouldn't be slowing you down. Now, that's not always true though. There are cases where, and I've seen this a lot, people tend to start off over-engineering, building up really complex systems that they're not really gonna need. For example, building out a big giant state machine system for a character that runs to a place, stops and blows up or something. Some, some like really simple logic and over, overcomplicating and overbuilding these things. Now, if you have a really well architected project, what you're going to see is maybe a slightly slower ramp up at the beginning, but you're going to get a big improvement over time. So the, the little bit of extra time that you might spend early on kind of building things out and figuring out the cleanest, best way to do things, it's going to save you 10x that amount of time going forward. It's I've seen, um, I forget what it was, there's this chart that shows the, the cost of development over time and decisions over time. And essentially, you know, the, the later down the cycle, you know, engineering cheap, after it gets to QA, expensive, after it gets to production, super expensive. The same is true with um, just architecting your project and time in general. If you don't put a little bit of effort into keeping things clean, keeping it nice early on, you do run into the problem of stuff just starts to fall apart and it gets harder and harder to work on your project. Things break as you make minor changes and totally unrelated things break. Like I said, I've told this before, but I remember one of the MMOs I was working on, somebody fixed a bug with the feign death system, my buddy Adam, he fixed the feign death system. There was a little bug there, entire crafting system broke because shit was too tightly coupled and there wasn't enough architecture splitting things up. There's too much, just get it done now, not get it done right. Now that's, I'm saying that like you should architect and engineer a lot, but I wanna be really, really clear that over-engineering early on is a terrible idea. You almost never know exactly what you're going to build or how the best way to build it is. So what I like to do personally is build up my systems, get them working, make sure that I'm actually gonna use them and that they kind of do what I want them to do. And then I'll go back in and refactor stuff. So if I take a look at some code, like um, let's just dive into some stuff. I wrote. Sometimes you have nice, simple things like this, right? It's a script where something collides. If it has this on it, you blow it up, you kill it, right? It's, it can be as simple as that. Now, we may want to extend this out later so that you know this kill on touch script can blow up other things that aren't players. In that case, we could start looking for other types of components, maybe adding an interface or a base class here and starting to kind of build up a little bit of game architecture and project architecture. Um, but we don't do that to start, right? I don't just go in and say, hey, let's make an interface for this that's common that will be shared later. I first start off with the correct way, the way that works. And then as we need the, the extra functionality, start refactoring and changing things. Eventually stuff can get complicated, right? Like I've got some more advanced code like this where we're using generics and lots of interfaces. Um, There's multiple levels of inheritance here so that we can simplify things further down the road. So like for instance, this class right here, it may seem like, hey, well, what is all this crap up here? It's all there to make it so that when I want to implement a new, this is an ability effect, when I want to implement a new one, I only have to write a tiny little bit of code. I don't have to copy and paste stuff. I don't have to go write up a bunch of boilerplate crap. I just go in, I do the one or two little tiny things that I need to do, and then it works. And this is the benefit of good project architecture. Um, so I don't want to go too deep into this, but you can see, like for instance, on this case, when I was talking about feign death, here it'd be very hard to kind of break things in other systems when I process a feign death ability effect. All I really do is set a bool, turn off attack, and clear aggro. Done. 
you know, if I was going in and doing a big giant switch statement or some method that had, you know, all of these different effect types in there, whole lot harder to keep track of what's going on when this thing happens, what's going on when it's removed. But a little bit of work on just clean project architecture suddenly makes this nice and simple. And if I want to add in a different type of effect, again, it's the same thing. Just override this base class that you know, took a little bit of time and a little bit of thought engineering, and it's suddenly simple. Now, again, with these two, it's not like this thing just magically appeared and I was like, hey, this is exactly what I need. I need all of these things. Um, I need them to work exactly like this. It's a process of iteration and refactoring. We start off with the thing that works, then see how we can extract that out and make it maybe a little bit more generic if it makes sense, um, or make it work with other systems so that it's reusable and kind of clean. And just, I guess the, the biggest thing here is separating out stuff like if you're gonna work on i sorry i kind of want to go off on a little tangent here but if you're gonna work on your code and you want to keep it clean the number one thing you can do is just follow the single responsibility principle just make classes that do one single thing they do the one thing well and they don't do a whole bunch of other stuff not a lot of if statements not a lot of switch statements just a lot of classes those classes do one thing and that's it it'll help tremendously it helps with source control it helps with debugging it helps with fixing things it helps with extending stuff you know just follow that one principle if that's the only thing you do it'll you know i'd say double the quality of your code overnight just by following that principle now again don't over engineer don't uh, don't start complicated don't build out you know if you want to build a game make the game work first make the core parts work make sure that it's fun make sure that you're gonna actually keep working on it you're gonna finish it the worst thing i've seen people do is just dive in and start trying to code up super complicated systems and never actually get any functional gameplay so like they don't get anything working they spend all of their time on some little system it could be like a terrain generation system or a level generation system or some complex um some other complex system that's just going into their game that they think is super important but they're never getting to the gameplay part and the gameplay part is what's fun the gameplay part is what sets your game apart from everything else most of the time there are edge cases but in general it's the gameplay part that matters so you want to really focus on that get that working and then clean stuff up and, and that doesn't mean don't clean things as you go you know, obviously keep cleaning things as you go follow some sane patterns name things right don't create giant methods and ideally follow the single responsibility principle that alone will make it so your code's clean you don't have to do that much more to really have good quality stuff um if you've got thoughts on this though drop them below uh please feel free let me know i'm always interested in seeing how other people's workflow is Personally, in my experience, I've seen a lot of other senior developers do kind of the same thing where they get stuff working and then fix it up, refactor it, make it pretty, make it nice. And I think that's kind of the way to go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you have liked this stuff or any of the other videos, please subscribe, share with your friends and hit thumbs up and all that stuff. All right. Thanks again.